The goal of this video is to make you understand events and everything related to them in a really clear, easy way. So what is an event? Well, imagine this scenario. We have the player, an enemy, and a camera. Now we're thinking about adding a mechanic where the enemy screeches and it causes the player to hold his ears and also it causes the camera to shake violently. Now to achieve this, we could just get a reference to the player script and the camera script inside the enemy script. Then we could just simply call player.holdEars and camera.shake within the screech method. Now this would work, but there are a few problems with it. Imagine that this mechanic scales and there's a whole bunch of other things that react to this kind of screech. We'd end up with references to a bunch of different objects that really have nothing to do with our enemy. As much as possible when we code, we only want objects to be involved with their own inner workings. They shouldn't know too much about anything else. This is basically spaghetti code defense. Sometimes you have to reference other objects, so just try and keep it to a minimum. That way you write much easier to understand code and much cleaner code and also much more maintainable code. Another way of dealing with this would be to just get a reference to the enemy in the player script and the camera script and then just checking every frame if the creature is screeching or not. So one problem with this way is that we're continually having to ask the enemy if it's screeching and it just feels unintuitive and the reason it feels it is because it is. <laughs> There's a better way. So the way we actually want it to work is the enemy shouts, I'm screeching, I'm screeching. And these two entities are listening for that trigger. They're listening for that event. And when that event happens, they can react. This way, the enemy doesn't need to know anything about anyone else. All it needs to know is it's going to screech. And when it screeches, it doesn't care what happens after that. It's, its job's done. So let's have a look at what this looks like in game. So here we have the player, the enemy and the camera. Let's look at what happens when we call the screech method on the enemy. So the player puts his hands on his ears and the camera shakes. Now, the enemy didn't know anything about the player or the camera. All it did was screech. So to understand how to set a system like this up, first of all, we need to talk about delegates. Delegates are actually quite easy to understand, no matter how complicated the internet seems to make them sometimes. A delegate is a reference to a method or list of methods. That's it. <laughs> The rules with delegates is that the return type and parameter list of the delegate and the method it referenced has to match. So this method could be referenced by this delegate because the return type and the parameters are the same. But this method could not be referenced by this delegate because they don't match. So there's quite a bit of syntax to deal with when making a custom delegate like this, more than what I've shown. So to make things easier for us in C-sharp, we've been given action and func. And both of these are just predefined types of delegates. An action can take any amount of parameters but can't have a return type. A func has to have a return type and can take any amount of parameters. For today's example, we're going to be using an action which has no parameters. So all it is is on screech and then in our screech method on the enemy, we're just going to call on screech dot invoke. So let's see how it's all wired up. OK, so here we are in Unity. As you can see, we have a player, camera and enemy. So let's look at the enemy script first. Okay, so we have this public static event action on Screech. It's static because we want to be able to listen to it no matter which enemy is doing it. We don't want to have a reference to each enemy that can do it. And the event keyword just means that we won't be able to invoke the action from outside this class. So you can take away the event keyword and still use it like an event, but the thing is, the player or the camera or any other script could invoke this action, which wouldn't make much sense in our case. 
in the player script, we're doing something that might seem really weird to you if you haven't used delegates before. So what we're doing is saying screecher.onscreech plus equals flinch. Now flinch is one of our methods here. And why we say plus equals is because we're adding flinch, this method, onto the list of methods that this action refers to. Let's have a look at the camera script. We're doing the same thing. We're adding this start shake onto the on screech action. So this on screech action inside will have start shake and flinch. And now when we invoke this action, both of these methods are gonna get called. So a good time to use events is if two systems are very separated. So for example, UI and the player. So if the player loses health, he shouldn't tell the UI directly that he lost health. He should just send an event that says health lost or on health lost. And then the UI can listen to that event and update itself accordingly. Okay, so just to summarize, an instance of a delegate can hold a reference to a method or list of methods. These can have parameters and a return type or neither. We can then later invoke this delegate and call all of the methods that were stored in it. So an event is a notification sent by an object to signal that something has happened. Uh, the listeners of that event, sometimes called subscribers, then react accordingly. Lowercase event is a keyword that's used to prevent classes outside of the delegate instances class from invoking the delegate or modifying its list of method references. They can still add or remove themselves from that list though. An action is a predefined type of delegate that can take multiple parameters but can't have any return type. This is just to make things faster when writing code. Funk is a predefined type of delegate that can take multiple parameters and must have a return type. Okay, so I hope you learned a lot from this video. If you've got any questions, leave them down there in the comments and like, subscribe and all that shit. So, okay, bye. <laughs>